Hey guys, welcome back. So today we are going to see an interesting topic like what exactly will happen in case if we delete a Kubernetes namespace in uh, production. Okay. So imagine like uh, you are running one command. Okay. And suddenly all the parts are terminating, services are disappearing and traffic uh, drops to zero. Okay. Then you realize like uh, you have deleted a Kubernetes namespace in production. Okay, so today like I will show you like uh, what happens internally and uh, whether Argo CD can save you and uh, how uh, real production teams recover uh, from this mistake in case if this happens, how exactly they will uh, uh, troubleshoot and how they will uh, fix this one. So what happens inside Kubernetes? Okay, so the step one, it is like namespace marked for deletion. Okay, so for example, if you are creating a namespace and if you are uh, deleting the namespace, so all the resources which are there inside that namespace, it will be deleted. Okay, so we have a concept called uh, finalizers. Okay, in case if you are uh, enabling the finalizers, then uh, the thing is like it will be having a few components okay so for example we will have components like pvc load balancer crds so those will be getting stuck in uh, terminating state whereas in case if you are not enabling these uh, finalizers then what exactly will happen the namespace will be deleted and all the resources which are there okay so everything will be deleted so what are all the resources that will be affected uh, related to namespace like parts, deployments, replica sets, services, config maps, secrets, ingress, HPA, PDB. So all the resources which are associated with it will be failed. Okay. So now let's see in a demo. Okay. Okay. So what we can do? Like we can try to create a namespace. Okay. So we are going to create a namespace called payments. Okay. So we have created the namespace. Now we are going to create a deployment called web of image nginx in the namespace payments. And we are going to expose that deployment on port 80 and in the namespace payments okay then we are going to get all the resources which are created okay so we have created the payments namespace now we are going to create the resources okay we are going to create the deployment and we are going to expose it okay so it is created and uh, service is also created okay now we are going to get all the resources in the payment uh, namespace so if you see, we have the pod, we have the service created, we have the deployment created, we have the replica set created. Okay. Now what exactly I will do? I will try to delete the namespace. Okay. So kubectl delete namespace payment payments. Okay. Delete. So the namespace payments deleted. Okay. So if you see, I will also open a new tab. Okay, so here I will just uh, get all iPhone namespace. So if you see, no resource found. Okay, so everything got uh, deleted. Okay, so even if we check like uh, kubectl get namespace, kubectl get namespace payments. So no, okay, I'll just given an extra thing. Okay, if you see, like uh, not found, like uh, namespaces with the uh, name payments not found. Okay, now in the same example, what we can do now again, I will uh, create this one. Okay, I will just uh, create uh, uh, the resources and the namespace again. Okay, so I will just uh, do a arrow to see all the resources. So if you see, we have pod, we have services, deployments, replica set. Now we are going to apply a thing called finalizer okay so i will just copy this one so what exactly it is so config maps okay so finalizer is a config map so we are going to create a config map with the name prod config okay and we are giving it to the namespace called payments and finalizers we are giving it to kubernetes and data is prod so in case if it is prod and we are applying the finalizer okay i will just uh, copy this one vi YAML. Okay, so I'll just uh, paste it. Kubectl apply ifnf finalizers. Okay, so this is created. Okay, now what I will do? I am again going to delete the namespace. Okay, so I am going to delete the namespace payments. Okay, so while I get delete this namespace i will just uh, go and uh, get the um, con namespace okay let's see like uh, what exactly it will be showing so previously deleted the namespace now kubectl get namespace payments 
okay if you see it is in terminating state so previously previously it got terminated right right it got deleted okay now when we enable the finalizer it is in terminating state so it will be stuck in the terminating state forever okay unless you delete the finalizers this state it will be in the terminating state okay now let's uh, go and get the resources okay kubectl get all iphone and payments okay now we can try this command but what happened to the resources will it also be in the terminating state no because only the namespace will be in the terminating state but all the resources which are there uh, which are associated to, the, to this namespace will be deleted okay so only the namespace will enter into the terminating state and uh, kubernetes will start the garbage collection of uh, those uh, all the resources so like uh, once the namespace is deleted what exactly the end users will experience so in case if we are an end user for example if something has happened in some application like amazon paytm google pay whatever it is so what exactly will uh, us uh, the end users will experience so for users we will see 502 or 503 errors and mostly we will be seeing blank pages when we try to enter the site or app we will see blank pages and payment failures so for example we deleted the payments uh, namespace right so all the payment related applications configurations etc will be related to payment okay so whatever payment we try to make it will be failing so let's assume like uh, we are using uh, phone pay or paytm and uh, it let it be in the any region of the uh, old like uh, india us whichever it is okay so you have to make a payment and if it is failing so if it is for one or two users that is fine for example if lakhs of and lakhs of users are uh, facing the issue then it will be a uh, major uh, issue right and uh, the application will be unavailable to the users okay this is what the end users will observe okay but what exactly will happen in the monitoring and observability section so we will have the monitoring tools right like prometheus and grafana and different tools so what exactly we will see we will see error rate spike we will see multiple errors related to payments uh, getting triggered and um, our inboxes and on call uh, mobiles will be continuously ringing with all the p1p2 issues because the production is down because lakhs of users are impacted and it is obviously a major issue okay so it is a huge impact uh, worldwide or whatever it is in case if you are uh, affecting that one okay and we will see latency explodes like uh, even if uh, latency means like uh, users were not able to do any payments or something okay so the latency will explode okay and alerts firing non-stop so alerts will be triggering every second like your inbox will be full and uh, unless uh, you do some freeze or something uh, the alerts will be keep on coming okay so this is what we will observe from monitoring end and for users we will have the different impact okay and for example if you are using some streaming applications and uh, other things the consumers will crash the consumers which are consuming the data from these applications it will crash and offsets will stop committing okay they will not commit anything to that application and consumer lag and uh, backlog will increase us okay so this is what uh, the end users will be uh, facing and uh, what exactly we will see once the action of uh, uh, deletion of the namespace is done okay so we always talk about argo cd so argo cd is the will uh, make sure everything will be running and it uh, because it will be uh, thinking git as a single source of truth right so can argo cd save you in case if you delete that one so the first scenario is namespace is git managed okay for example if namespace is git managed if argo cd manages the namespace we will have to create a yaml file with the kind namespace and we have to define all the parameters so what exactly happens so argo cd will create the namespace again okay but the resources which are deleted for example all the parts deployment services uh, uh, everything which are created earlier all those things are gone because the only the namespace will be created because if uh, namespace is git managed okay and if you have enabled argo cd auto sync enabled namespace will be recreated in case if you have uh, configured that one namespace will be recreated deployments will be recreated parts also will start coming up uh, if parts of everything start coming up that is fine right uh, then uh, what is the issue you may be asking but the main problem is for example if secrets are missing because secrets are managed externally or else in case if you are managing it using some other way if it is you may be missing then applications will not be able to authenticate because users may not be able to authenticate and application to application communication will not be happening because we are seeing that uh, secrets are missing okay and pvcs may not bound in case if uh, 
we already have the pvcs like they may not uh, bind to the existing uh, parts okay and uh, external resources are permanently lost so in case if you are having some uh, resources managed uh, then they are permanently gone then obviously like it is having a big impact okay and uh, how exactly we can recover in the real world okay so the issue has happened and issues are uh, common to happen okay so how exactly you can recover in the real world scenario okay so the first option it is the best case as well so gitops redeploy so what exactly is gitops redeploy so you create the namespace uh, payments and argo cd app syncs the payment app okay so then what exactly you will do you will verify the workloads and you have to check whether uh, all the secrets are recreated and everything is working fine so works only if everything is git okay so everything is defined in git for example if all the configurations uh, everything is uh, defined in git then it will sync and the application will start working okay and also the secrets should be externally managed so we have to use like uh, vault or aws secret manager anything only then uh, we will be able to manage this one okay otherwise in case if you are managing internally using some files or something if it is gone then again the applications will be impacted okay and this is also the best case okay and second option is like uh, we have pvc and data recovery if pvcs were deleted data is gone okay for example your if it is a data company and if data is gone then obviously your company is screwed okay so only backups can help so always uh, it is a best practice to use uh, ebs snapshots or csv snapshots or else we have to use tools like valero okay so all the metadata all the configurations will be saved in uh, any of the s3 buckets or uh, some place okay so what is the hard truth Kubernetes does not backup your data by default. Okay, so you, you have to configure the backup for your applications. Okay, and the third option is manual recreation, and it is a worst case. Okay, so you, you have to recreate the secrets, reconfigure the ingress, reattach DNS, restart everything. Okay, so this will take hours, and hours of impact is uh, going to kill your company. Okay, so so the best option is use a GitOps redeploy with all the configurations available immediately within your application, okay? So that uh, you will be able to manage uh, and uh, you will be able to uh, recover everything uh, soon, okay? So this is okay, but how to prevent this forever, okay? So one time the issue has happened and your uh, company had a huge impact, everything is fine, okay? How do you make sure that this will not happen going forward? So here comes the hero RBAC. Okay, so you have to configure the RBAC properly. Like always, you have to follow the policy like least privilege. Okay, so for example, if you will have different teams like Dev, Test, uh, and uh, DevOps team, multiple teams, right? So you can't give full admin access to Dev team or uh, full admin access to testing team. So you have to give access only for the resources which is required and only the read access. Okay, because you will like you will be giving admin access for example if you are giving admin access they will not know the resources like what exactly they are used and what is the impact in case if it is deleted okay they may delete it uh, unknowingly or may they may be testing some other thing and they may delete some other resources without knowing the dependencies because you are the one you, you know how exactly the environment works okay so if you give uh, the full access to them Obviously, the issues will happen and uh, you are the one who will be screwed, okay? So, all the pain has to be borne by you because uh, in, in the end of the day, you are the one who, are, who is going to fix that issue, right? So, obviously, like uh, we have to always follow the least privilege option. So, we have to give access only to the required resources and the required access, okay? Unnecessary admin access should not be given to any end user, okay? So, it will backfire to us. Uh, if you are doing that one okay so you have to uh, be very strict in this RBAC policies like you have to give only the uh, get and list accesses to the users who doesn't require this one for example if you are a DevOps team you know the entire infra and you can have the uh, admin access uh, so that will be an option and uh, also one of the thing is like no delete access for humans in fraud for for humans in prod uh, you don't give any delete access okay only read write uh, read and uh, list options is enough okay and disable namespace deletion so we can use some admission controllers like uh, opa git keeper or uh, kiverno so related this is also like very important so we can see kiverno in uh, one of the classes so what exactly this will do so this will define a rule like um, for example namespace which is having a label of prod 
we should not be able to delete okay so we can define all the policies so that no one uh, will be able to delete uh, any of the resources in the production okay and uh, the third option is separate cube config context okay so kubectl config use context prod okay so we can use some red terminal theme for example if you are using uh, whenever you uh, set the config uh, use context to prod it should uh, have a red theme so that you will be aware okay this is the prod environment i shouldn't delete or do anything so that uh, you will be avoiding that one okay or else you should have a prompt with a loud prompt like it is prod or uh, something okay so that uh, users uh, will obviously avoid uh, doing some unnecessary things on the prod environment okay and the main golden rule okay main golden rule in the devops and thing is humans should not have delete access in production never never give delete access no matter whatever it is so it has to come only through automation or only gitops so what exactly will happen with automation or gitops so you will be defining uh, it in uh, any of the uh, files in the git and it has to go through a process like review and approve because uh, PRs will be created and uh, pull, once the pull requests are created, it will be reviewed by someone and it will be approved. Then it will be merged. Okay, so by that you will be avoiding uh, uh, unnecessary changes in the production. Also, like um, you, in case if you are doing it uh, automation, it will uh, properly check all the things which are uh, can be avoided. Okay, so that is one main thing. Okay, and uh, uh, the major lesson which we learnt here is see the outage is not caused by Kubernetes. Okay, so this was caused by missing safeguards like we didn't have proper safeguards. Okay, so what are the major lessons? So GitOps is not a backup for uh, our environment. Okay, Big GitOps will recover the configurations like it will create the namespace parts configurations etc. But uh, in case if the data is gone, it can't do anything right and also we have to think like uh, another lesson is Argo CD is not equal to disaster recovery. In disaster recovery, in case if the entire environment is gone, uh, we will have another environment that is for disaster recovery. And Argo CD, it will not support that one. It will not support that one means it will not uh, be a tool for disaster recovery. Okay. And uh, RBAC saves careers. Okay. So if you are defining the RBACs properly, your career is saved in DevOps. Okay. And uh, backups. You should have proper backups. If you have proper backups, your company is saved. If, for example, if you don't have backup and your environment is gone, then your company is screwed. Okay. So that's it for uh, today, guys. So this is what uh, I thought of telling. So always, uh, what is the main thing? We have to take proper backups. We have to have proper RBAC policies and everything should be file based. And uh, whatever goes into production should be already reviewed and it has to go to the production. Okay. And make sure the finalizers are enabled so that uh, resources are not deleted unnecessarily. So these are all the best practices, guys. Okay. So in case if you like the video, please like and subscribe. Let's see with uh, some good content in the next video. Okay. Thank you. Bye.